Next time you decide to stick your tongue at someone in the ocean, remember that this fish can and will eat it. And oh, just wait, it gets worse. No! How worse can it possibly get from a creature that specifically targets other people's tongues, like someone choosing to eat the thigh or breast meat of a chicken? The answer is gruesomely worse-like. Oh! Goosebumps worse. Apparently, eventually, you become what you eat. Literally. Because this creature, the tongue-eating louse, not only eats tongues, but it replaces them itself. Nature is wild, guys. Eels we get. Vampire squids? Sure. Creatures that consume tongues and become tongues, as insane as that sounds, may be where we draw the line. Meet the tongue-eating louse. It's an isopod, an isopod like crabs or lobsters, but that's where the similarities end. It's also a fish parasite, and it's the stuff of nightmares, what fish parents whisper about in the dark to their offspring. Before I show you how it goes down, please like this video. It will help my videos get some extra attention. Here's how it goes down. These parasites are what are called protandric hermaphrodites. That means they can change sexes later on in their life cycle. So at the start of their lives, the parasite sets on its sinister journey by swimming inside of a fish's gills. Their preferred prey are snappers, but they've been observed in seven other species. Once safe and snug inside the gills, they stay until they finish their maturation process. Then they change from male to female and the nightmarish invasion begins. The female detaches itself from the fish's gills and makes her way to the base of the tongue, where it sets up camp, bed and breakfast included. It's a little more violent than that, though. To secure itself to the fish's tongue, the aptly named tongue-biting louse bites into it. Once the tongue is pierced, it slurps on the blood until it quite literally drains it. The tongue atrophies into a husk of what it was and falls off. The fish doesn't stay tongueless for long. The louse made the mess, but it cleans it up, too, in a twisted and unpleasant way. The louse burrows itself in place of the tongue and operates as a sort of a horrific prosthetic, but like one with eyes. It's a pseudo-tongue, one that takes up too much space, is an eyesore, and makes it hard to believe that the fish can actually continue to live its life normally. But the fish survives. The louse then settles in for the long haul, just in time for Act 3 of the trauma it inflicts on some poor snapper fish. For a while, it feeds off any blood in the mouth area or fish mucus. This is until it wakes up to the realization that it needs to reproduce. Remember the part where we said the tongue-eating louse starts out as male and evolves into a female? Odds are that a male has burrowed itself to the fish gills. It makes its way to the tongue, the other female louse, and they'll mate while the louse is still playing at being the fish's tongue. Afterward, the host fish suddenly finds itself with a mouthful of newborn brood of male lice, the name of the louse offspring. Yikes! You would think this is a rare thing, but the tongue-eating louse is actually widespread throughout all of the world's oceans. It can be found roaming depths of 2 to 60 meters. Most notably, that means it commonly exists in the mouths of fish who live in depths that we capture. Numerous times have lawsuits been raised against stores that sell fish with the isopod still in their mouths. Some fish are cooked with the louse still inside. But here's a final surprise. The tongue-eating louse isn't actually harmful to humans. Even if they bite you, they won't actually replace your tongue. They pose no threat whatsoever to humans. Snappers, the Atlantic croaker, and other fish species can't say the same, though. Check out this video. It's specially selected for you. You'll like it.